How's it everyone? Jacques from Dapper Shave, back in the rainforest, straight razor shave. Gear, oh, one of my softer but uh, more difficult brushes to load, we're gonna talk about that. My Japanese um, <coughs> shave scuttle, I've been soaking my brush in. The razor, a beautiful Hamburg green. I call this an orphan razor and we're gonna speak about that. Maybe you can ponder, you'll see there's only Solingen on the front and there's nothing at the rear. <coughs> and this is not being grind off, um, but we'll talk about that, 6-8. Uh, hollow ground, extra hollow ground. Beautiful engraving, uh, sorry, engraving this side. Set in rubber wood scales, internal brush washers. Uh, I know this is a great shaver and I changed the edge on this. So if the shave goes well, we're going to talk about how that was honed. The soap, unscented, from uh, Master Soap Creations. And if you stick around to all the end, I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, information around nourishment and post-shave. But before we get there, the people's pre-shave. You've seen me do this before. With the puck with your fingers, wrap some soap on. Use the soap you have, make your own pre-shave, prep the skin and enjoy your shave. Um, lots of you are not minimalists, so you've got lots of product, um, not an issue, use that. Um, skin preparation we all know is, is, is half the shave. This brush is a 27 mm knot. It is extremely soft, it's well broken in and it takes a lot of time to load. One of the reasons for that is it's quite a, a floppy brush for lack of a better word um, and it's got a very dense core. Moreover, the bore also likes to um, hold water quite well, especially with a tight core. So water control and product on this brush um, can be challenging, so I just tend to make sure I load enough. I know there will be enough water, and then I'll uh, try not to add too much uh, water into the brush as I make my lather. I'll just make sure everything is worked through the core entirely, and then we'll take it from there. This is a, a, a tallow based soap and I specifically like tallow heavy soaps and I'll cover, cover that in my pre-shave, so stick around. The razor, the Humber Green, as I said, I refer to them as a orphan razor. I told you there's only Solingen on there, nothing else. So razors will have on the front side of the tank very proudly the manufacturer's name. Yeah? That's lacking, it only says Solingen. And there's nothing at the rear. So, Kohlfrieder and um, developed the hex machine and uh, gave you these double double concave grinds, these very thin ones. And people talked about under greens and ringing razors and so forth, referring to that specific grind. But 
<clears throat> as that technology settled, people were still using it and on the outskirts of Solingen there was a, a local municipality called Ham... Uh, no, I've got that wrong, I think. In any case, <clears throat> moving on, in, in the late 20s, 30s, there was the Great Recession and that was not just the England or American thing, it was a global thing. Many cutlers and grind, um, uh, cutlers and, and, and steel, steel makers closed their doors, many folk lost their jobs. Um, but still folk would get together when they've got material working in somebody's forge to try and uh, generate additional income, make razors. And I refer to these as orphan razors. Made by people that lost their, their skill, uh, not their skill, their job in the Great Recession. And uh, when they made these razors, they were not representing a specific brand, only people that got together. So you will see no additional markings on it. Nothing. And so that is my understanding and reasoning behind that. I can't say accurately that that, that is true or not. Um, in any case, a little bit about Humber Greens. Maybe somebody else has got a bit more detail. All I know is they are fantastic shavers. This one too. But it's got a different edge on, so. Feels quite good. It definitely has got a distinct feel to it. So Jacques, what is it? Seems to be shaving well. Alright, so this edge was hung on a Zulu grey. It is uh, a stone that was graciously gifted to this channel by a very loyal and special supporter. Um, Ian, thank you very much. This is the stone. It's a 3 by 8 I've lacquered it halfway, engraved it myself. This is the rear skin. The shave is going well, so at some point in time I'm going to do a honing video um, with this. In fact, my shave yesterday was with this razor, which I'll do a show and tell on, but it's a wedge and it's got a bit of a warp in. So, um, I needed to convert a, a hollow grind edge to a Zulu to get a feel for if uh, I still like it or not.
Uh, it's a good edge. As I said, it's quite distinct. And I'm not gonna get into the characteristic now. I've barely finished the first pass, so. I've had this done for uh, quite some time, uh, but more importantly, I've done in the past three years. a huge amount of research into these stones including going through um, uh, drill sample records across South Africa so I've got some useful information related to the stone I'm not sure when I'm going to have time to do that but we'll cover that when we get there the edge is quite smooth um, when I do the video on the Zulu um, guys, so when I started my research into that, you're gonna get a lot of positive and a lot of negative, and not necessarily all related to the performance of the stone. Um, so we'll talk about those, but in no particular detail. Um, and we'll see where that goes. As I say, I, I really enjoyed that first pass. The bulk of it, so this is with the grain and then this becomes against the grain. So when I did those side strokes, to give you an idea where I was cutting, yeah, on my top lip I came across the grain and then a bit of everything here in the neck. But more than, I don't know, 24 hours, 30 hours worth of growth. I don't think I'm going to require more than two passes. So the Zulu Grey is definitely a finisher only. You are definitely not going to set the bevel on it anytime soon. It is hard, it doesn't need a lot of maintenance. Having said that, um, no, I can say that it's had quite a lot of work on and um, no need to do anything really to it. It does come with a little uh, rubbing stone, Nagura, lack of a better word. Um, and we're going to talk about this. This stone shows characteristics of rusting. <laughs> but we'll cover that um, in the... Um, in the eventual owning video the stone needed a lot of preparation in advance but once again I'm not going to cover it here
So there's a message I'm thrilled to be a South African and to say how yeah, we've got a stone. It produces a very fine keen edge, comfortable edge. Is it the ultimate unicorn? No. But neither is any of the other stones. So, if you collect her, wanting to try something different, it's definitely worth a go. They leave a very nice edge on a, on a kitchen knife. Finishing, very nice. On your pocket knife. Or. And obviously a very nice edge on a straight razor. So once again, um, as I say, there's some negativity associated with this stone. Don't come with a negative mindset when we do this video. I've said before, this is an educational channel. So that's how it's going to be. Comfortable, um, very comfortable. And it gives that sensation of extremely keen. Yesterday I shaved with the, with the wedge dryer. I wanted to say it feels taggy um, and on my chin it does against the grain on the very dense stuff but having said that I haven't pushed this down at all so I know um, we can extract a lot more performance. Uh, let's just tackle the chin. Okay, quite pleasant, quite pleasant. So that was the initial shave. Second show with the Zulu Grey for me. 
you would normally, if you put water on or soap again, um, you would feel steam if you've got irritation. I don't feel any. Post shave. <clears throat> I've changed my post shave. I use Fernando's unscented soap soap for my post shave. You guys know when I do a shave, I use the soap on my brush, prep my skin and wash it off. I'll still do and I'm gonna do it with this and then when I'm done I'll show you what I mean by my post shave. Cleaning the brush. So remember the people's pre-shave. Nobody else's, the people's pre-shave. What you have got there, that's what you use. And uh, I think it's a, it's a technique that works really, very well and just adds to the shave without busting the bank or doing anything dramatically different. I'm going to rinse this off. And I've rinsed my puck, <clears throat> so it's clean, nice and shiny. And while my skin's wet, I take my fingers, which you like, you would make a pre-shave, but you don't take a lot of soap. And I use this as my moisturizer only, nothing else. No splash, no additional cream, no nothing. Why? Well, first of all, this hasn't got any perfumes in, so it's nice and neutral. Secondly, um, tallow is very good for your skin. Um, it's got a lot of nourishment capabilities, vitamin A, B, C, D, omega-3 fatty acids, um, and it really absorbs quite quickly into the skin. This is as close as you get to human fatty acids is beef tallow. They've been using it for thousands of years. It's not something new. And so for me, you'll see that is already absorbed into my skin. It's not looking greasy. It is feeling fantastic and that um, silky smooth velvet feel you get that Half an hour, hour after your shave, this remains for the entire day. Trust me, try it, tell me what you think. I initially started doing with a, uh, one of Fernando's soaps, and it worked so well, I uh, had to try the unscented one, because I believe it's got a slightly higher tallow content, or steric acid content, I'm not quite sure. How Fernando made that one, but for me, that one behaves the best for my skin. So, this is the last time I'll be using the soap as a shave soap. This is my um, my skin nourishment uh, product going forward until it's finished. I'm quite sure I'll get Fernando to do another batch. So, pre-shave skin nourishment. Um, you guys are welcome to, to do your, your post shows any way you like. I like to minimize product. I've got a bit of a sensitive skin. And uh, I haven't got else to really say. Let's quickly show you the stone. Um, there's some water on here. It's got a great green color and maybe a little bit of blue. But when I do the video, you will find and see that there is a huge color range density uh, in these stones and you find them actually over a very broad area uh, in different configurations and hardness. This one is, I come from the free state, um, there I know what's flat, so if I am in the free state and look and I look at this, it's the same flatness. So it's, I don't know, 12,700 kilometer radius this way and another 12,700 this way. So slightly concave but flat. 
speak to you guys uh, in the next video.